students to the online NPTEL course Contemporary Architecture and Design. Uh, in the second lecture, we will uh, discuss the brief about the uh, history of architecture and design and later we will move on to the uh, main topic which is contemporary architecture and design. So, uh, today we will discuss uh, from the classical architecture and uh, art phase how uh, uh, the pre-modern um, uh, journey of architecture and design was. So, if we look at the timeline, this has been shown in the last uh, uh, slide of uh, the previous lecture. So, uh, this Greek and Roman was the classical architecture uh, and design art um, style. Then, uh, this was the uh, period uh, bef uh, between uh, classical to uh, Renaissance. Then, uh, 14th century uh, onwards, Renaissance started and it uh, happened, uh, it uh, was uh, till um, 17th century that was uh, Renaissance architecture and then uh, mannerism. And and Baroque and Rococo uh, was there, the neoclassical and after that industrial revolution started. So, after industrial revolution which is 19th uh, century, um, uh, mostly 1920 uh, onwards the modern architecture um, started and modern and postmodern together is called contemporary. So, this will be our main part of discussion what happened during the contemporary architecture style which is after industrial revolution. We will discuss what is the uh, industrial revolution in the next class uh, after we finish the um, recapitulation of the history of uh, um, art and architecture and art. So, uh, the first uh, phase was uh, the classical architecture style which is Greek and then Roman. We are not uh, discussing about the other um, what was happening in the other um, uh, areas. We are just focusing on the European um, history because in the Egypt and other places like Indus Valley civilization and uh, even in uh, Chinese civilization there are different uh, art uh, and architectural movement, uh, architectural style. Uh, so, uh, we are focusing on European uh, style because industrial revolution happen, uh, happened in Europe and from there uh, uh, when we start discussing contemporary architecture. So, we will see that it started with the European, Europe was the center. So, uh, the early phases of modern architecture uh, like uh, Bauhaus and other uh, styles evolved in the uh, European um, uh, era, even in the pre-modern. So, there was also a stage between industrial revolution to modern. So, uh, there was a minor, uh, small uh, few movements like for the machine, against the machine movement, Art Nouveau and uh, Art and Craft movement, those were there. So, those all are uh, mostly in uh, Europe. Then uh, gradually it uh, spread in America. So, Chicago movement and other movement um, started in modernism and in post-modernism onwards or the late modern modernism onwards after internationalism it flourished all over the uh, world. So, we are discussing about the history of art and uh, uh, architecture only in the European part. So, the Greek and Roman architecture was uh, there first, then early Christian, Byzantine, Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, then mannerism, then Bar Baroque and Rococo, Neoclassical. After that, uh, this industrial revolution started, and uh, this is the contemporary part of um, uh, architecture. And similarly, if we look at uh, so in the uh, art form, Greek will have uh, mostly Greek and Roman art will have the statues, and then Roman also has uh, some wa um, uh, wall paintings, uh, fresco works. Then uh, early Christian also has uh, similar uh, fresco works, but um, uh, 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 but these are mostly um, dedicated uh, towards the uh, spreading of Christianity and also in the art um, in architecture we will see this uh, mostly the church uh, was uh, built. And then Byzantine, uh, which uh, we know that there are Byzantine uh, glass mosaics were there. Then Romanesque was there again in the uh, wall um, uh, frescoes. Then Gothic windows. And after that, Renaissance started and when uh, a different kind of paradigm of art movement started. And we will see that similar um, uh, there is a similarity between architecture and art movement in all the um, phases. So, uh, then similarly in the art also the same movements were there, um, Renaissance, Mannerism, Baroque, Rococo the neoclassical after that uh, this is industrial evolution. So, we will start with the uh, discussion of architecture and then we will move uh, towards the discussion of art uh, du uh, during the uh, history phases. So, we are discussing this because uh, um, 
architecture in the contemporary era is a continuation of the history. This is not a, a single break line. So, while discussing the history, we will see uh, what was the pattern uh, of visuals, uh, how the visual style changed and what are the uh, visual vocabulary, how they have changed over the time and then uh, what happened during the industrial revolution will be uh, uh, better, um, uh, we will have a backdrop of understanding what happened after the industrial revolution and why modernist and postmodernist movements in architecture and design was uh, um, uh, what was um, uh, what is the uh, meaning of that and how and we can also link what is there from the history to modern uh, architecture and design so in the classical period uh, we uh, we see most uh, mostly the geometry was uh, very important there and in uh, greek architecture they have made uh, different orders and those uh, everything has a particular proportion in doric ionic and corinthian orders doric was a male uh, evolved from male proportion ionic evolved from female proportion and corinthian is more of a uh, floral um, design and it, uh, when uh, we look at parthenon like structures so they were particular proportion and optical corrections and everything was so important for uh, for Greek um, uh, people and uh, but Greek architecture um, uh, it is mostly trabeated trabeated means there's no arch so it is a flat stone panel uh, uh, members which is uh, uh, placed on top of the columns and um, then they have made the pay uh, pediment and if we look carefully these ornamentations over here this is a derivative of wooden structure to stone so these are stone structures but these were taken inspiration from the wooden structure now in Rome uh, they were a little more advanced than uh, in construction technique uh, we were not going details in the construction uh, we just see what uh, what are the features of architectural features uh, there so they started making the uh, arches so it is more uh, arcuated and they uh, started using concrete in uh, many of their um, structures so they, uh, this was stone as well as concrete so and when uh, you make arch and you rotate the arch in a different direction you get a dome so this is a dome in part, uh, pantheon rome the next is uh, the early christian architecture mostly we see the churches but these churches we will see the construction technique was uh, strasses so this kind of uh, structures uh, if you see in the section so this uh, will be king post or queen post uh, trusses and this kind of sections will be there so you see this section of the uh, uh, roof structure is something like that in early christian after that this is byzantine byzantine has a, um, this pendentive vault so it is a square base and then a dome on the square base so if you look at the dome these part of the dome will be chamfered and you get this pendentive vault so you can see this if you chamfer this you will get something like this and uh, there will be uh, again arches like this so this becomes a square base uh, and a dome structure on top of it so you see this 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 part of this um, this is a part of a dome on top of that they have made another dome in this uh, structure which is Hagia Sophia in Constantinople so this part is called the pendentive vault which is a vaulted structure but on a square base so, so they make this four arches and then they start making the vault and uh, then uh, comes the Romanesque architecture. So Romanesque architecture, this uh, uh, series of portaled arch is one of the feature of Romanesque architecture. And one of the interesting thing they uh, started making is the cross vault. In Byzantine, we have seen this kind of pendentive vault and here we see the cross vault. So you see from one corner to uh, uh, this is a uh, arched uh, arch, uh, structure. And uh, then when they join these arches, these two um, diagonal arches this becomes a cross vault or the groin vault uh, or rib vault uh, and earlier it was like a single vault and when uh, when they make this cross arches so there was a provision of making this crossed vault so after that we will see in the churches and cathedrals this cross vaulted structure was there earlier in um, uh, early christian it was like a roof was like something like this if we see from plan and here the roof was uh, there was a provision of making these kind of roofs so this can be the cross section of the church now uh, in the gothic architecture we see high ornamentation and uh, the main feature was the pinnacles and buttresses so if you look at gothic architecture the wall was highly ornate and there was a lot of uh, huge 
punctures or the fenestration, huge windows where they made uh, this um, glass paintings of Gothic period and um, highly ornamented um, uh, facades. Uh, the rose windows were one of the uh, key uh, criteria. So this is Notre Dame Paris and Duomo de Milan uh, was one of the um, few examples of uh, Gothic architecture. So this is the Duomo de Milano's um, flying buttresses. So when the uh, facade becomes very light, they uh, thought that it might fall down because this is made out of stone. So there's a lot of punctuation in the facade. So to support this facade, this flying buttresses, these are called fi flying buttresses, these were made and this was supported by heavy uh, strong wall and again on the uh, top of the strong wall they uh, made pinnacles. So this is one uh, support and then on top of that they have again put, in, put some weight. So these are the pinnacles, these are the pinnacles on top of the flying buttresses, these are the flying buttresses. You can also see flying buttresses here coming from the Notre Dame um, uh, Cathedral of uh, Paris. So, uh, in classical architecture, we have seen a very geometric approach of design. Gradually, this started uh, with the new uh, advancement of construction technique. They are going up for the uh, more ornamentation. In Gothic, they reached the peak of ornamentation. So, uh, this started with a very uh, less ornate structure if we look at uh, the classical architecture style this is ornament uh, the, there is ornamentation but if you look at parthenon and pantheon they have a very uh, this these are just flute on uh, the uh, stones and then this is a very simplistic plan so this if you look at so there's just a uh, space over there and then there's a series of uh, columns on uh, outside and uh, from there they have reached uh, they started uh, or, um, uh, adding the ornamentation gradually so you see a lot of ornamentation and then uh, they experimented with series of arches so this is only one functional arch and then the series of arches are creating the portal and in gothic they reached the peak so if you look at the facade treatment here in the duomo there are a lot of uh, uh, many things are going on in the facade so gothic is the peak of ornamentation now uh, just after gothic uh, they come down to the renaissance so this is the european renaissance uh, period when they uh, were talking about uh, the uh, position of man is uh, going more uh, going higher so humanity is uh, overpowering the uh, church uh, church's capacity so before that the church and pope's uh, um, uh, power was quite high and then they uh, started questioning that and then there was a lot of uh, flourishing uh, knowledge uh, got flourished in different domains of science and arts and uh, humanities um, uh, so uh, they started questioning that and then they again went back to the geometric thing so geometry is something which is man-made which looks man-made and uh, which is uh, like a centralized mass was there and it's very geometric and very minimalist in uh, nature again so uh, uh, architecture and design sometimes it goes like that so uh, they start with minimalist um, so, uh, um, approach and then uh, it grow, uh, rises in the peak of uh, ornamentation then it, it uh, sometimes goes back to the again minimalist approach so this also happened in the uh, modernist and postmodernist era so this is a uh, rotation of uh, design uh, process which comes back again sometimes not exactly uh, comes back the same uh, in the same way but it's kind of a revival so in Renaissance architecture, if we look at the Bramante's uh, San Pietro, uh, the plan is just uh, like a rotunda, it's like a cylindrical pa plan and it's a very simplistic dome on top and then series of uh, columns and if you look at the columns, uh, ornamentation is uh, very plain if you compare with the uh, uh, Gothic architectural style. And if you look at the plan, so this is the main uh, uh, the cathedral, uh, the church, and this is just bounded by a square plan uh, with few altars on uh, over there. And this uh, this is this is uh, symmetrical, radially symmetrical. And he also questioned the uh, uh, position, uh, the, uh, the construction technique, and the uh, plan planning of the arch, which should look like a Latin cross or at least a Greek cross in some cases. So this here he is making a radially symmetrical arch, which was uh, very um, uh, radially symmetrical charge 
watch which was very uh, unique to that time and then uh, Brunelleschi's uh, Florence Cathedral if you look at the dome so the, uh, this uh, construction technique of the dome is quite interesting uh, the story of this is quite interesting it was uh, a huge uh, span of dome and he uh, invented a uh, different technique uh, to make the dome so there was two uh, different vaults or, uh, there so uh, this, this is the outer vault you are seeing and there's another vault inside and um, uh, there was different uh, um, uh, this is very interesting to know what is the uh, construction technique we are not going into detail into the construction uh, but here if you look at the aesthetic uh, part so this is also very uh, simplistic in nature so, and uh, these um, uh, the facade ornamentations are drastically less if you compare to the previous movement which is uh, gothic style now next after this uh, renaissance this is the next part of the renaissance or the continuation of the renaissance which is mannerism and it is just before uh, another uh, movement which is baroque and then rococo so uh, baroque and rococo will come to the baroque and rococo uh, style which is again extremely high in ornamentation so it's something in between so here we see the facade treatment uh, which is uh, th there's a little distortion and then uh, the architectural vocabulary was used in a different uh, a metaphor and a different way uh, it was not supposed to be um, uh, something the way um, architectural vocabulary was used was um, giving a duality and questioning the existence of uh, that so how it is happening here if you look at this is the keystone of an arch which is supposed to be like this and supposed to take the load so it cannot drop like that because it uh, if it drops like that it is not passing the load to this so this is actually questioning the structural stability of this arch so this is not actu actually a keystone this is a just a facade treatment and this is a continuous arch is there inside and it is uh, just a, a treatment on the facade and um, uh, which is questioning the duality of the existence of the uh, keystone the keystone if the keystone is like that then it can uh, transfer the load but if it is like this then it will fall down now again if we look at so these uh, looks like windows or the fenestration but these are all uh, covered now also if you look at this part carefully so there's an arch and on top of the trabeater so two different things to which is very different from each other are getting mixed and which is one on top of each other now uh, if you look at these columns these are not even columns so these these columns these are not taking the load because uh, this is a load bearing wall which is um, uh, taking its uh, self load and these are just half column which is uh, like a relief work on top of it and uh, which gives a sense of column which is um, uh, taking the lo uh, load from here is not actually a column so these are um, these uh, facade treatments are um, questioning the uh, architectural vocabulary and this has a duality and we can see there's a extension of uh, um, uh, i mean there's a change from the simplistic architecture to uh, the work on the uh, to the aesthetic um, work on the facade treatment so it's going towards again a more ornamental approach now next is this uh, baroque and rococo again it is extremely high on ornamentation so this is saint peter uh, peter's basilica's uh, uh, vatican city uh, which is done by Mi michelangelo there are many uh, other architects who worked in, uh, in the saint peter's Bas um, basilica so this is michelangelo's part and if you look at again this is extremely high in ornamentation so this is the inside part of the uh, saint peter's ba basilica so if you look at the altars and this works on the um, column and on the uh, again the uh, roof and the fresco works uh, this is extremely high on ornamentation this is a rococo style of uh, uh, architecture so again you if you look at the ornamentation is very high so baroque and rococo is uh, mostly similar and they are uh, high on ornamentation baroque came first and rococo is sometimes called uh, the late baroque the baroque and rococo has a little difference in the mood of this architecture and painting baroque uh, mm -hmm. has uh, a more heavy meaning or a little um, darker themes in art and um, architecture and ro uh, rococo is very light there will be fairies and very uh, light-hearted um, uh, things were portrayed in um, rococo but mostly this is uh, similar and uh, the um, ornamentation is extremely high in both the cases now after that there's a neoclassical architecture again less um, in ornamentation uh, so if we look at so neoclassical architecture again goes back to the 
classical so that's why this is new classical which is uh, etymologically this is this means the new form of classical so they went back to the classical architecture which is again um, uh, as we were discussing this is less in ornamentation so again you can see on the facade it was uh, again becoming a less ornament, uh, ornamental. So this if you look at, so there is a lot of inspiration from the classical uh, Greek and uh, Roman architecture. So this uh, Greek uh, style of architecture was re uh, re-looked and a re uh, new kind of vocabulary of um, the design evolved from the new, um, uh, the reinterpretation of the classical architecture. Uh, Andre Palladio's works are also um, falls under this uh, uh, category. So here also if you look at, this uh, is uh, this is going uh, this is uh, emphasizing on the geometry and this is uh, um, again uh, um, from two uh, these two axes this is symmetrical which is also has a similarity with the renaissance architecture and because the renaissance also talked about the geometry and here everything is uh, uh, similar and these parts are actually quite um, 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 it's it's a kind of a new way of replica new uh, kind of um, interpretation of Greek architecture. So you can see this kind of pediment and all these columns, this ionic columns are um, uh, adding the, uh, add, um, added towards the four sides of facade. So after that, uh, uh, we talk about the what is happening in the uh, art movement. So this uh, after neoclassical architecture, uh, industrial evolution started and uh, we start the modern uh, modern era and uh, the contemporary era. So neoclassical was the last and then uh, uh, the modern uh, era started. Uh, th then uh, this um, uh, after industrial evolution which is uh, 1920s onwards the modern uh, architecture uh, which is uh, to, uh, the part is mo uh, first part is modern and then this postmodern together this is a contemporary architecture uh, together we call it a contemporary architecture or design uh, this started. So uh, parallelly what was happening in the classical art, so classical art uh, in uh, Roman and Greek style which was uh, mostly uh, marble or bronze uh, sculptures and they uh, valued the proportion, human proportion and then ideal uh, proportion of uh, the figure. And then in Rome we see a fresco work or the wall painting and uh, a lot of uh, uh, paintings on the vases in uh, case of Greek style. In the Byzantine style, uh, the mosaic, glass mosaics uh, were uh, very um, uh, predominant. So we see in the Byzantine architecture within the uh, interior of this uh, Byzantine architecture in Hagia Sophia or Santa Sophia or other uh, examples of Bi Byzantine um, architecture, this Byzantine glass mosaic uh, 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 the work. So these are small glass, um, a different colored glass and with these uh, small pieces of glass they made this uh, murals. After that, the Romanesque art again. Uh, this, uh, these are wall um, fresco works, so which is there in the inside the cathedrals and churches, and uh, the Gothic art. Mostly, uh, we see the stained glass windows in the uh, cathedrals. So these kind of uh, uh, stained glass windows we see in the. Um, uh, cathedrals like um, Notre Dame uh, Cathedral of um, Paris. So uh, because of these huge windows, which has this. Um, gothic glass uh, painting the uh, fenestration uh, the amount of fenestration becomes very high and in gothic architecture also there's a gothic arch which is uh, quite important which is um, the style of gothic uh, architecture so this is the gothic arch and this is the rose window and uh, because of this fenestration this uh, amount of uh, stone work becomes very less and then uh, that's why they started making this uh, flying buttresses and on top of that the spinnacles uh, they started making. Uh, so next is the renaissance art, renaissance art there's, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, um, change of paradigm started in uh, renaissance painting. So before that the uh, um, painting if we look at here there's no, propo um, no uh, proper way of um, perspective was depicted. So uh, these uh, figures were uh, juxtaposed on top of each other and even in Byzantine everybody's um, position was um, side by side on or on top of each other but uh, this was not clearly showing uh, exploring the possibility of uh, 
uh, perspective. So here in Botticelli's work and Mona Lisa's work and many other uh, Renaissance painters work, the perspective, uh, human eye point of view was explored um, in, in the uh, first time. So and uh, if you look, uh, look at, so this looks like a, uh, the way people uh, see. So this is more uh, like a uh, figurative approach of uh, painting. Before that, these were uh, less figurative and more abstract kind of uh, painting. Uh, in, term, in terms of uh, sculpture, these were uh, these were figurative because there is one sculpture. There is no, um, they are not making a group of sculpture and drawing it, uh, drawing a perspective in the sculpture. And also in the wa uh, wall sculpture, wall mural of uh, classical um, Greek and architecture uh, form, you will see this flat. Uh, flat um, scenes of um, uh, war so every uh, uh, um, uh, the statues or the uh, mur uh, this uh, stone works will be uh, the figures will be uh, beside uh, beside each other and uh, so th they did not explore pr perspective in um, in uh, detail and uh, we see in the uh, renaissance uh, uh, painting a lot of um, intricate way of uh, drawing and the, they have studied the human anatomy and the way they are drawing the uh, uh, human uh, figure uh, um, was much more um, figurative and much more mature than uh, the previous uh, style. Now after that this mannerism, so they again started ornamenting it, so uh, they studied the human anatomy and uh, the ideal proportions and uh, the body uh, postures and here they started exaggerating the posture, they are uh, trying to break the uh, proportion and making it more abstract and ornate. So if you look at this uh, proportion of Madonna, so you will see uh, the, um, uh, the uh, length of the body was elongated. So if you look at, she is uh, extremely tall in compared to human body proportion and if you look at the neck is very long and uh, this is becoming idealized and th in that way uh, they are trying to make an abstract uh, depiction of uh, beauty. Uh, so this is not a uh, human proportion and um, they are ch uh, changing the proportion. Even in the uh, sculpture, the uh, posture of the sculpture is very, uh, it's like, um, it's, it's not a natural uh, way of uh, posture. So every uh, hand movement and this uh, uh, posture is very dramatic in uh, nature. So this kind of uh, change of, this is not a, a very natural posture of, uh, of uh, two people. So this is, this, there's a lot of drama going on in the posture. So same thing started uh, getting exaggerated in the Baroque and Rococo. So the, uh, the one style in art is uh, chiaroscuro. So this is a juxtaposition of light and uh, shadow. So if you uh, look at, so in, the, in this Vermeer's painting of a um, girl with the uh, pearl earring. So here there's a, um, a lot of light and just here there is a uh, very dark background. So there is a lot of contrast going on here in the uh, very adjacent vicinity. So which was not um, uh, there in the previous style. So they, they started exploring with the contrast. Similarly in the Villas case, uh, Last Meninas, you can see this uh, slit of line which is uh, where light is following. And here you can see this part of the uh, human figure. Only this part is illuminated. And then uh, only this uh, few part of the face is illuminated. Even in the king, when king is coming, so the uh, king's uh, silhouette is uh, showing and the, from the behind this is a um, uh, vibrant light. So this is a juxtaposition of uh, light and shadow was there. And even when they are working on the architectures, this is all uh, intricate uh, floral patterns and the filigree works, they also give this um, juxtaposition of light and shadow when the light, uh, sunlight or the uh, other kind of illumination will fall on uh, top of this uh, work. Uh, they will also create this um, juxtaposition of light and shadow which is very, uh, uh, which has high on attraction value. Now in the neoclassical style, again they started exploring the classical postures and here again uh, the postures were quite uh, like statue. And so this is the death of Socrates and Napoleon by uh, Jake Lewis David. And here also, uh, uh, if you look at this uh, position, this looks, uh, this, these are inspired from this marble statue which was there in the uh, classical uh, Greek and Roman art um, uh, was there, which is uh, like the marble statues were there. And these paintings 
are something uh, like inspired from this marble statue even their draperies and uh, the pos postures uh, are kind of mimicked from a marble statue and this also has a, a real unnatural way of uh, the settings and uh, it looks like everybody is posing for this particular clique and uh, which was not there in the renaissance and other um, style so gradually in the mannerism it was there and then um, Baroque and Rococo was quite different and then again neoclassical was uh, again different. Uh, so after that neoclassical uh, um, uh, movement, uh, mo mostly it is industrial revolution and uh, in after industrial revolution totally the paradigm of art, uh, architecture and art changed and uh, there was two different school of thought which is uh, which went uh, for the machine because industrial revolution is the age of machine started there. So one uh, style of uh, one group of architects and designer thought that we should embrace the machine aesthetics and another group of uh, uh, designer and architect thought that we should go with the traditional style which is against the machine and then the two opposite pole of um, uh, school of thought uh, started uh, emerge and from there the modern journey of contemporary architecture and design or the modernism started. So we will discuss about the industrial evolution in the uh, next class, thank you.